Hi friends, I'm Gio, and if you're just tuning in, this channel is soft-spoken ASMR about gay men falling in love. In other words, MM, or M4M, or male-male fiction and romance. My hobby is writing gay fiction and gay romance and gay stories. If that interests you, relax, sit back, and enjoy. I design my videos and stories so you can work on other projects while you listen, or veg out in your favorite chair while following the lives of the men involved. For those of you who've been here before, it's fun having you back. The work is original, I wrote it, and people and places are fictitious. I made them up. By the way, if you have a fun idea for a setting, leave a comment below, and it might show up in a future story. I will warn you, the noises you hear in the background, that's my little dog snoring. She likes to sleep under my desk while I'm writing. This week's story is called Just One Dance. I hope you enjoy it. I stared at the men dancing at the side of the dance floor. Black hair, olive skin, dark eyes. He wore a red loose-fitting short-sleeve linen shirt with some type of design on the left sleeve. Skin-tight black pants that hugged him indecently tight but didn't interfere with the way he moved. And black shoes that shine like a mirror. Slender, trim, athletic, he moved like a professional dancer. And if he smiled like that at me, I would instantly fall in love with him. I slowly inhaled and almost whistled. Even though the shirt was loose and flowed with each motion, it didn't hide the way his body moved. God, he was cute. If the light hit him just right, the outline of his lean body momentarily shone through his shirt. Another breath, and I slowly exhaled. If fate had been kinder. But instead of a king of hearts or a jack of diamonds, life had dealt me the ace of spades, the bad luck card. The man and the woman danced a tango, and they were good, and smiling at each other. I only stared at him, though. We were in the club called Club Cabana Roja, on the outskirts of Miami. It wasn't one of the ultra-modern things with neon lights and black walls. This was a place of old style and old class. Stepping inside its coconut and rum-scented air was stepping backwards in history by 70 years. Wicker panels and skylights let the light shine in, or they would if it was daylight. Large ceiling fans with wicker blades moved the air around, and potted palms in giant flower pots provided decoration. The floor was polished red mahogany, and the walls were an off-white beige with mahogany trim. Maybe that's why I like it. The frantic pace of the modern world disappeared whenever I entered, and I could pretend that life had been different. I'm Carlos Henderson. Light brown hair, light blue eyes, and about six feet. Once a native of Wisconsin, but I'd never go back. I don't like the cold. My family agreed with me because they moved to New Mexico. Tonight, like most nights, I wore this really nice white linen shirt with long khaki pants. Even though we were in Florida, I would never wear shorts. My cane was beside me dark wood with a sturdy handle that had the army logo on it, a gift from my former unit, and a reminder of happier times, though I didn't think so then. It kept me company whenever I left my apartment, and though it had been a long time since I had seen some of the guys, we always stayed in touch. I took a sip of my rum runner. The bartender always made it a little heavy on the pineapple, and I've grown to prefer it that way, and imagined dancing like that man, moving my legs like he did, feeling his arms about me, his breath warm on my cheek, seeing the passion in his eyes right before we kissed. 
which would never happen. Maybe I could dance with him if the music was slow enough. The woman he danced with wore a green silk dress with a floral pattern stitched on her left side. It seemed that with each move, she did something seductive, like gently running her fingers down his arm or holding him very close or smiling at him with a naughty pout on her lips. I already figured he was straight, but surely just one dance wouldn't be a problem. Maybe the rum was getting to me because I got up. Using my cane, I walked over to the small band and tipped them and told them what I wanted. A slower dance, something a touch romantic. It was a song from an old 1950s movie I had watched. The movie was called Stop That Taxi, which referred to the final scene when he ran after his love as she almost got into a taxi and left him. Midway through the movie, they sang a duet. The chorus went, Wrap me in your love and we'll sail the stars. The man sang it to the woman he loved, his voice warm and soulful, right before they kissed, and she rubbed the back of her hand against his cheek and she swooned in his arms. When they finished the song, the movie strategically switched to another scene. I waited until the band played my song, and I hobbled over to the man and woman, softly humming the melody. They were exiting the dance floor and laughing about something. I've enjoyed watching the way you move. Would you mind if we danced just one dance? I asked him. Sorry, friend. The lady's with me, he said. I gave her a slight bow. Pardon me, ma'am, but I wasn't asking you. If it's okay, could I borrow your boyfriend for a few minutes? Her eyebrows raised a little and a tiny grin almost escaped. His eyebrows didn't move, but he stood a little straighter. Me? Would you humor me, I said, with a hope of a smile and held out my arm for him to take it. He looked to the woman and she shrugged. I've got to run to the little girl's room, so I don't mind. I won't get jealous as long as it's only one dance. Was I imagining it, or did her eyes twinkle with a hint of mischievousness? Just one dance, he said, and chuckled. I gave the lady my cane and held his arm as he escorted me to the side of the floor. Keep it slow, please, I said as he held my hips. I held his shoulders, and we moved slower than the music slow enough that my leg didn't ache. His hand supported me, and I held on to him to keep my balance. It's been a while since I've danced with a man, he said. The pleasure is mine. I'm Carlos Henderson, I said, as we slowly danced. Nico Sideris, the woman is Christabella, he said. You two make a nice couple. Married, engaged, or dating, I asked. Complicated, he said. We broke up a few months ago, and we decided to give it another try. If you don't mind me asking, why the cane? Five years back, I was on the wrong end of a missile attack in Afghanistan, I said. I'm sorry, were you in the military, he asked. I was almost two years in the army before I earned a medical discharge, the hard way. You, I asked. Nothing so dramatic. I'm a programmer for an insurance company, he said. If you don't count the cruise around the Caribbean my family took when I was 16, I've never left the States. Do you come here often? I live close by, and I come almost nightly. It makes a good walk, and I enjoy being with people and listening to the music, I said. Doesn't that get expensive, he asked. It depends on what you budget your money for, I said. Compared with the moves and excitement of the tango, Nikos must find this boring, but... It is just what my leg needed. The happiness of holding a man again made the entire night worth it. Too soon, we got to the final chorus and I softly sang, Wrap me in your love and we'll sail the stars. I'm sorry, what did you say? Nikos asked. Nothing important, I said. Nikos would never understand how magical this moment was for me. The music ended, and Nikos was kind enough to let me lean on him as we walked to their table. Did you two have fun? 
Christabella asked, rising from her seat. It was nice to slow down for a minute, Nico said, and introduced us. You are lucky to have an amazing dancer as a boyfriend, I said. Boyfriend? No, but I'm glad you approve of him, she said, and handed me my cane. I leaned over and took it. Thank you for letting me borrow your date for a dance. I waved at a nearby waiter. Their next drinks are on me. That's very generous, Christabella said. Why don't you join us, Nico said. I'd be interrupting your date even more than I have, I said, nodding at them. Nikos, Christabella, it's been a pleasure. I found a table, not an easy thing on a Saturday night, and listened to the band and watched the dancers. Nikos and Christabella danced until eleven or so, then I didn't see them again. I don't often dance, but dancing with Nikos was a rare delight. Nikos had been careful and my leg didn't bother me at all. The club closed at one, and I walked to my apartment, humming my song. Though I came to the club almost every night, Nikos didn't. I suspected I would never see him again. Most people try one club this weekend, then find another the next, and a third the next. Sometimes they go back to one they'd already visited, but they are always looking for the new. A lot of clubs changed hands every two or three years and became something different. Not Club Cabana Roja. It had survived many, many years, from grandfather to father to son, and I hoped it survived many, many more. I guess I'm always looking for the old, for the way things used to be. The next Saturday night rolled around. I sat at a table near the band, sipping my rum runner. I only allowed myself one a night and watched the people dancing, or talking, or eating, or drinking. Just plain living. Sometimes when they were drunk enough, they ran around like kids. They don't know how lucky they are. About eight, I noticed both Nikos and Christabella on the dance floor, once again dancing the tango. He wore a pale yellow linen shirt and dark khaki slacks. She wore a burgundy dress with a small slit on the left side and a flower in her hair. They were laughing as they danced, filled with life and love. And once again, I wished I could move like Nikos did, dance the way he did. He had beautiful, full lips that often broke into a smile and revealed perfect teeth. If he only knew how lucky he was. The urge to be next to him, to hold him, even kiss him, made me sad. Would Christabella mind if I danced with Nikos once more? I hope not, because I'd already gone up. Just like before, I went and talked to the band, tipped them, and they agreed. It took a moment to walk to the dance floor. The music changed to the same song Nikos and I had danced to a week ago, and I hummed, Wrap me in your love and we'll sail the stars. As they exited the dance floor, they both saw me as I walked towards them. Nikos, Christabella, would you mind humoring me again? I said. I think it's sweet, Christabella said and took my cane and lightly kissed me on the cheek. But one dance is all you get. Nikos held out his hand and escorted me to the center of the floor. I know the song only lasted four minutes and 17 seconds, but it seemed to be over in 30 seconds. I like dancing with you, I said. You're like a fine bourbon, very smooth and very stylish. I've never had that kind of a compliment before, he said, and led me to their table. A woman could get jealous, Christabella said, her eyes playful, and she handed me my cane. I waved over a waiter and said, their next drink is on me. Will you join us tonight? Nikos asked. You must, Christabella said, at least share a drink with us. You two have a date to finish, I said, but I have had fun, maybe next time. I went back to my table and ordered another rum runner. I must have had too much fun because I never ordered two. When I got up Sunday morning, I had a slight hangover, but I did my morning exercises and went for a short, slow walk. Finding a bench, I sat and eased the pressure off my leg. The way Nikos held me, the way he whispered, the way he could dance. I knew I never had a chance. He was straight and I was gay. 
He could move and dance, and I couldn't. But that wouldn't stop me from watching him and wishing life had gone a different route. I liked dancing with him. Each time I came to the club Cabana Roja, I tried to remember how Nikos danced or smiled or the way he held me. What would it be like to dance the tango with him, a fiery, energetic dance that made the blood flow? I could never dance the tango with him or anybody, but I could imagine. When Saturday came, I started the day with my morning calisthenics and then went to my physical therapist. It had been five years of on and off visits, five years of my life trying to ease back into my life, and sometimes it felt like 25. I sat at my usual table, sipping my rum runner and listening to the music. It was a wild Latin tune, and Nikos and Christabella commanded the dance floor. I didn't recognize their style, but it was wild and fast, and I smiled and tried not to be jealous. Nikos wore black jeans and a black shirt. Christabella wore pale yellow with some gold glittering from her ears and neck. The way they moved, the way Nikos moved, I wanted to be with him, dance with him, laugh with him. She leapt, and he caught her, and they stared at each other as he gently placed her on the ground, holding her a moment before spinning her out, taking her hand, and spinning her back to his shoulder. Nico spun his partner around and glanced at me. Was that smile meant for me? No. He was obviously in love with Christabella. Would they mind if I asked Nikos for one more dance? Maybe I was pushing my luck. It had been a long time since I had known love. I would sit here a minute longer and watch them, at least until my legs stopped aching. I could watch Nikos all night. He swirled around Christabella, then she him. They had such style, such grace. I wish I could be part of their world, but that wasn't an option. I can't complain. The club Cabana Roja was my world now, and it let me live and dance vicariously. The music ended, and he kissed her hand. They whispered a little, but they didn't smile. Nikos nodded a little as he led Christabella off the dance floor. The alcohol had dulled the pain in my leg. Time to get moving. I hope they didn't mind. It was just one dance. I hobbled over to the band and told them the song and gave them a tip. I walked to the edge of the dance floor and waited till the music changed to our song. Wrap me in your love and we'll sail the stars, I softly sang. It's not working anymore, is it? Christabella whispered to Nikos, and he stared at me, a small smile peeking out, then whispered something to Christabella. They walked over to me. One more dance, I said. Only if you promise to sit with us, Christabella said, flirting with a smile, and took my cane. I'll let you have two dances this time. She winked at Nikos, but their look spoke of sadness, then vanished. Nikos took my hand and led me to the floor. We held each other as we slowly moved. Then he let go of me and walked behind me and held me. We swayed a little, and he took my hand and gently spun me. You are quite the man of mystery, he said, floating in and out of our lives like a ghost. You are a romantic, I said. I couldn't stop staring at his eyes, his lips, the way they smiled and seemed so inviting. I don't know what happened. We got to the first chorus, and I softly sang with the band, Wrap me in your love, and... We kissed. A beautiful sharing that made me forget the ache in my leg, or the sadness of how my life had changed. I knew it was wrong to kiss him. Nikos was on a date. Christabella was watching us. For a moment, I wanted him to hold me, and me him. Our lips brushed and pressed together. Our bodies moved as one, our mouths united, and our kiss became one of passion, and... What was I doing? I broke free of the kiss. I'm sorry, I said. I guess you bring it out in me, Nico said, smiling, and slowly spun me out and spun me back. The song ended and became something wild, the kind of music used for a tango. 
Nico smiled the kind of smile that made me fall in love with him. He held my waist, I held his, and I didn't want to let go. I hadn't been this happy for years. We spun together. My leg didn't twist right and collapsed under me. It jarred the nerves in my thigh, and I fell on the dance floor. Damn, I said, and held my leg. A sharp pain shot up my thigh and into my back. I'm sorry, I should have been more careful, Nico said, kneeling next to me. Does it hurt? A little, I whispered. Let me, Nico said, and lifted me in his arms. I wrapped my arms around his neck, and he carried me to the table Christabella had found. He set me in a chair, and I rubbed my leg. How bad is it? he asked. It's easing up, I said. It was your knee, wasn't it? Nico said, reaching to my knee to gently massage it. I know a little about sports injuries. In the world of dance, you learn a lot, Christabella said, sliding her chair over to me. She must have seen us kissing. What do I say to her? She laid her hand on mine and gave me a small half-smile. Nico knelt in front of me and tried to massage my knee, but stopped. The concern in his eyes changed to one of panic. He must have realized the truth about my leg. Nikos eased my pants leg up. I'd rather you didn't, I said, but it was too late. Nikos lifted my pants leg until it went over where my knee had been and to where my prosthetic joined my stump. My thigh ended a little above the knee and my prosthetic attached there. It was a simple one, a foot assembly attached to the knee assembly by a metal pole and then to the sheath that helped cushion it and hold it to my stump. Nikos's brows furrowed and his mouth narrowed. Oh. Christabella leaned forward and saw my lower leg. She didn't say anything, but she squeezed my hand. I didn't know, Nico said. Now I feel really bad. It's not your fault. I can basically walk, but something about the sheath and the pressure of my walking irritates something in my leg. My doctor thinks that maybe I have a nerve too close to the prosthetic, and my weight pinches it or something. I can only stay on it for so long, then it gets really tired and really aches. But what about all those people who wear them and have no problem? They walk, run races, do anything, Christabella said. That works for a lot of us, but some of us have to take it slower, I said, and slid the pants leg back down my leg. It's something I don't like talking about. We'll just leave it at... You were on the wrong side of the missiles in Afghanistan, Nico said. The wrong side, I whispered, and reached for my cane. Now you know why I dance slow. I need to let you two get back to your date. I've interfered enough. Like the last time, your next drinks are on me. I tried to stand, but my leg ached enough that I had to sit back down. Nikos and Christabella glanced at each other, then Nikos looked at me. I guess you're finally having a drink with us, Christabella said. Since it was my fault you fell, I'm buying, Nico said. What will you have? My usual drink is a rum runner, but it's not necessary. I've already had one, I said. Then you'll have two tonight, Christabella said. And another dance when you're ready. I owe you that much, Nico said. When the drinks came, Nico's raised his in salute and said, To my new friend, I promise to be more careful next time. I sat with them, having fun, and a little while later, They grooved and danced back on the dance floor. I massaged my leg and sipped my drink as the hour grew closer to eleven. Nikos came up to me. One last dance? I'll take a rain check. My leg still aches. You and Christabella enjoy, I said. One last dance, Nikos said to Christabella. One last dance, Christabella said. It was a slow dance, and they danced slow, holding each other, whispering. Every so often, I caught Nikos looking my way. Near the end of the dance, Christabella said something, and Nikos nodded. Sometimes I wish I was like everybody else and could do the things everybody else could, like I used to. But, as my dad often said, you have to take the weather as it comes. It doesn't matter what you wish. When it rains, it rains. And when it's sunny, it's sunny. I guess the last few years I've lived in a fog bank. Just after eleven, they came back to the table, all smiling and holding hands. Christabella bit her lip and whispered something in Nikos's ear. Nikos held her hand and said, I understand. 
I bet I could guess what she suggested she and Nikos do later. Thanks for a great evening, I said. If you come back this way, let's do it again. How are you going to get home? Nikos asked. It's not far. I'll walk, I said. Late nights are some of my favorite times. I'll walk with you, Nico said. I want to make sure you get home all right. It's not necessary. Christabella should be your first concern. After all, I wouldn't want to make her jealous, I said. Like I said before, you're sweet, Christabella said and kissed me on the cheek. I still owe you a dance, Nico said, and scribbled something on a napkin. And if you need anything, call me. And handed me the napkin with his phone number on it. Christabella smiled at that. Nikos and Christabella left. Though it was a little far from the band, I could still enjoy myself, and it was always fun watching the dancers. Like always, I left at one and slowly started walking to my apartment. Except for the fall, it had been a good night. How's the leg? Nikos said, running up to me. I thought you went home, I said. Not home. Christabella's place, he said. We decided it wasn't working anymore between us, except on the dance floor. We'll just be friends and occasional dance partners, but we don't love each other anymore. I think that's why she wanted you and I to get to know each other, because we clicked, the way Christabella and I used to, but don't anymore. I'm sorry, I said. Me too. The funny part? It doesn't hurt as much as I thought it would, he said. So what are you going to do now? I asked. First, I'm going to make sure you get home. Second, if you've got some music, I owe you a dance. Third, what if I bought breakfast to say sorry? I guess Nikos filled a need inside me. It was only six months, and we rented the Club Cabana Roja for the day. I danced with Nikos at our wedding. While the band played our song, we both softly sang, Wrap me in your love and will sail the stars. Thank you for joining me, everybody. It's been fun, and I appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Peace.